Now the next thing is the RF, which uh, is a little different to do, but it can be done quite easy. Depending on what kind of a dial you got, if you got a slide reel rule dial, you turn down to the low end, that's down below CKUA, around 540 kilocycles, and there's usually a line there on the dial glass where the pointer should stop. Now if the pointer goes beyond that line, or if it doesn't quite get to that line, you have to move the pointer a little bit uh, so that it stops right on that line. That's where it originally stopped when the radio was new. Then you dial up to 1400 kilocycles and you set your signal generator at 1400 kilocycles and you can adjust the little trimmer across the variable condenser uh, for maximum volume. But you have to make sure that if it's 1400 kilocycles that is coming in at 1400 on the dial. If it isn't, you have to go down to the oscillator, that's the bottom coil, and adjust the little trimmer there. That'll move the station on the dial. And you can move it until it comes in at 1400. Then you can go up to the RF circuit up above and adjust that trimmer to get maximum volume. It doesn't it doesn't move the station, it just uh, peaks up on it. Now you have the radio peaked up at 1400 kilocycles. Now you tune down to the other end of the dial and you see where CKUA comes in. It should come in at 580, but if it doesn't, uh, unless you have a a core inside the oscillator coil that you can adjust. And if it doesn't come in at 580, you can't do too much about it because there's no way of adjusting it. But if you have the core in the IF in the oscillator coil, you can actually move the station and get it right on at 580. See, the iron core in the oscillator coil has a big effect at the low frequency end. The trimmer condenser has a big effect up at the high frequency end and when you affect one it does affect the other a little bit. So then you have to go back up to 1400 and check it again because it won't be on 1400 anymore. You have to adjust it a little bit. Then you have to go down and check down at CKUA again and finally you'll get it right. And you can peak up the RF trimmer up above there at uh, 1400 kilocycles and everything should then be working good. Now what other troubles can you have in these radios? Well, most of the trouble is bad line cords with cracks in the rubber, always change them bad filter capacitors, making a hum in the speaker, uh, even when you turn the volume down and you can hear a hum coming out of the speaker, it usually indicates that the uh, filter capacitors are bad. And I mentioned about the paper condensers, is to change most of them. And the other trouble you can have is sometimes the variable condenser plates uh, get bent and they're rubbing. And sometimes you can straighten them out. That's a touchy job, depending on how bad they are. And I told you how to check the IF coils by wiggling them on a weak station. And of course, if you hear any noise coming out of the speaker, you turn the set on, 
you put your ear to the speaker, if you hear any hum at all, that tells you right away that the power supply is working, the output transformer is good, and the speaker is working. Then if you go and turn the volume control and you hear a little scratchy noise or the volume, the hum gets a little louder, you'll know that the whole audio section is working. Now, to check the oscillator, you measure the oscillator grid, which has a 22,000 ohm grid leak, and there should be a negative voltage on the oscillator grid, maybe minus eight volts or so. And then if there's a, if there's no voltage there, then the oscillator isn't functioning and you have to look for a bad tube or an open oscillator coil or a shorted uh, tuning condenser uh, or sometimes the mica will come out of the little trimming condenser and it shorts out. Those are all little tricky things but uh, it's easy to check the oscillator just by measuring the oscillator grid. Other troubles? Well, we've had troubles with uh, filaments becoming intermittent and opening up. Of course, filaments can also short to cathodes. Like I had one case I'll tell you about. It take long. I just changed the diagram here. There. I can remember one day a lady brought a radio in to be fixed and she said it plays for about a, an hour and then it cuts out. So the boss said, well, must be one of the tubes the filament is opening up in it or a loose connection in the line cord or something but he checked the line cord and that was good and uh, the tubes all lit up so we set it to play and it played good it took three days it sat there and played for three days in our shop I guess moving it around had some effect on it and finally it went dead so the boss said look in the back I was just a kid then, and he said, look in the back and see if the tubes are out. So I looked in the back. It had three metal tubes, just like here, and a 50L6 and a 35Z5. And I said, you can't tell about the metal tubes, I said, but the glass ones are, are still lit. Oh, he said, well, then it can't be a tube. It must be something else going wrong. And all of a sudden, as he said that, it, it came back on again. And so we played it for a while, and then it went dead again. And <clears throat> finally, I noticed that when it went dead, I was going to take the tubes out and test them. And when I put my hand on the 12SQ7, it was cold. It wasn't getting any voltage, but the 50L6 and the 35Z5 were still lit up. And what had actually happened, a short had occurred between the filament and the cathode, not in the 12SQ7, but in the 12SA7, over towards, see where I have the pins marked uh, on the 12SA7 there? I think I have uh, pin number seven there. The short was right in there between the filament and the cathode. Of course, the 12SA7 was still warm because most of the filament was still on. But there was not, nothing coming out 
for the 12SQ7. And so when we replaced the 12SA7, that was the whole cause of the trouble. But very hard to find something like that. So anyway, the new five tube radios, they're built on uh, printed circuit boards. They don't have any floating ground. Uh, usually the variable condenser is connected to AVC and the volume control is mounted on a piece of plastic or something and uh, it's insulated from, uh, from ground. It may have a capacity from the control to ground, but they're much the same, but they have eliminated that floating ground. And that's the way the five tube radios are made. And of course, if transistors hadn't come out, I think the five tube radio would have shrunk down to two tubes, two or three tubes, by using compactrons and uh, a silicon rectifier. But that would have been in the future, and we never, never did get there. Now there is a series of tubes you can get that are 100 milliamp tubes. These tubes here, by the way, are 150 milliamps. But if you want to buy the 100 milliamp tubes, they are available, and they're actually cheaper than these tubes. Everybody wants these tubes, and nobody knows what the 100 milliamp tubes are. But, but you can change, but you have to change the whole works. You can't just change one. You've got to change all five tubes. But they are available, and they, and they work just fine. They're the same uh, connections and everything. And of course, they are listed in the uh, tube manual if you want to find them. I haven't got a list of them today, and I don't remember the, uh, those numbers because they're, they're not in use very much. And, uh, and if you don't talk about stuff every day, you soon forget about it. Anyway, that pretty well ends my demonstration. I've been about an hour, and uh, if anybody has any questions, I can try to answer them. <laughs>